with the kids, that first contact you make, once you have your group together and you start talking to them, kind of sets the tone for the whole thing. Like I talk about in my wilderness survival class, probably the most important thing is, is your positive mental attitude. That's why a lot of people that have no survival training have lived, you know, one case nine days before she was rescued. Other cases, you know, people that really know their stuff expire a lot quicker. It's that mindset that, w that will. So it's really how you interact with the kids and, and get them in their right mindset. So you want to work with them, compliment them a lot. Like yesterday I had 10th graders and, um, you know, I'd ask them questions and if they'd get it right, it's like, hey man, you're awesome, you're smart. Or when I do my tug of war, when I show them the yucca rope, which we'll get into in a little bit, you know, you tell them how strong they are and, you know, I'll usually get, I'll start with a guy and have him tug and then, man, you're really strong. And then I go like, oh, let's get a girl and I'll do it. And I'm like, oh man, she's even stronger. So it's just kind of fun to mess with them a little bit and just interact with them, compliment them and so on. But you are going to change up your kit for the age group that you have. You're going to change up your kit for the, um, you know, different levels, certainly the age groups, but high school, I, I dealt with those 10th graders a lot different than I would deal with 5th graders, 6th graders, mm -hmm. people we usually get. Um, something I used to do, and I just, you guys that have been through my class before, I just got back into doing is, uh, I want to make it, again, interactive. So I go out on the trail a week or two before my walk, you know that season and I'll take pictures of plants or other things animals or sometimes I get them off the internet like uh, the, there's a deer photo in here and that that came off the internet because I just couldn't get a good photo of, of a deer but I'll take this these little laminates with the younger kids and I'll let them hold you know hold on to it what I do is I alternate leaders every kid gets to be a leader and when I walk up to a plant, I let them shuffle through the cards and then read a little bit about it. And then once they, if I have more to say, I'll elaborate on it. But the nice thing is when you do that way, first of all, they all feel like, oh, I get to be the leader. So they all get a chance to be a leader with these cards, which is really cool. But also you don't, if somebody starts talking over them, because these kids sometimes will talk over you and you know, get kind of upset. It's like, hey, what are you doing? And, but if they're talking over little Johnny, you say, hey, you know, why do you want somebody to talk over you and your leader? So it kind of brings them into that, you know, realm of thinking, oh, yeah, I, I want them to be respectful to me. So I'm going to be respectful to the leader. So something like this and you don't have to put grommets in it. I just for some reason I did that because I do that when I teach my nav class. I usually put grommets and I put tent stakes and I give them a bearing and they go out and they find some kind of laminate and so these that's why i have the grommets i'm just used to doing that but you could just punch a hole or you can do it as a booklet i've done this as a booklet with the scouts where i put all these pictures um, on an eight and a half by eleven you know regular paper and make a, a four page little booklet and it's the same thing you know they look through and then they find the plant or the item we're going to talk about and uh, and we can do that today too because part of this you know i want you guys to be the, the little kids today so we can kind of get that interaction and see what it's about. So this is something that's worth doing. Um, you could pass it around if people want to see it. You don't have to do it as, as elaborate as I did it or as fancy as I did it. So that's worth doing. Um, yucca, which we're going to get to, always collect stuff. We can't take anything from state parks or national parks or anything like that. Um, so what I do is I go a day before, two days before, and I'll collect it from an area where I know I can collect, you know, private property or somewhere where people aren't going to care that's not a state park. Or uh, MRCA used to, and I don't know if, if National Park still follows this and MRCA, they would say it's fine to collect for educational purposes, but don't do it in front of the kids. So when we stop at a yucca plant and I tell the kids, I pull this out of my pack and I tell them, look, we can't collect anything from here, but I collected this from private property and I'm going to show you about yucca. And we'll do that when we get on the trail, I'll show you how we make cordage and soap and things like that from the yucca leaf. If you do collect, go ahead and pass that around so people can see. If you are collecting it, be careful because you want to cut the tips off. Um, or if you're really careful, you can leave the tip on. Or what I do is I cut the tips off if it's going in my pack. I also take a knife and I just hit the edge. Feel the edge of the yucca and you'll feel it's almost like a saw on the edge. And all you have to do to soften that saw is you don't have to cut it. You just take a knife and you just do that. That simple. 
and I'll pass this one around and you can compare the two sides. And this way when you reach in your pack, you don't get cut by that saw edge of the yucca. All right, so, but what I'll do is I'll cut the tip off, but when we come up to the real yucca, there's, there's no problem in letting a kid touch the tip if they want to, to see how the Native Americans were able to use this for needle and thread because it was such a pointy object. But down on the bottom here, just kind of feel the difference in the sides where I softened it up. So yeah, if you're gonna collect anything to show the kids, do it, not, don't do it in front of them um, or distract them when you do it. Like, oh, teacher, talk to them for a minute over this way and then you go cut the plant. But no, don't do that. Just collect it, collect it in a place where you can collect it. And in advance, I do make, uh, Oops. I do make the yucca cordage and I have that with and when we start the walk I'll show you guys how I deal with all this stuff. I have some stone points that some people have made some that I have made I've got this here which would be used as a knife or a hide scraper for Native Americans when we talk about that um, This is just a feminine product good blood absorber if somebody gets cut, but I do carry a first-aid kit as well So you guys don't have to carry that kind of stuff Candy. You can buy this. I used to be able to get it at Michael's at the checkout stand. These little uh, paper bags. They have uh, root beer barrels. And anyway, well, not native. And I tell kids it's not native. But we come across horehound on the trail. I'll let them try a piece of candy. Okay. So there's horehound candy. Here's What's chia. Horehound? Horehound. Horehound candy. Yeah. We'll see the horehound plant when we walk. Okay. Um, used for sore throats and things like that. This is what you get from. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's yeah. how you buy it. And you can get it on Amazon as well. Or how candy is good. And the kids, you know, it's like a mix. Half the kids love it, half the kids hate it. But <laughs> I get kids ask for more or whatever. Um, Karen up at Topanga will take them and kind of break them in half or quarters. Um, and you can do that. I just give them out whole. It's just, I don't want to be playing with their candy and stuff. And I do put it into the lid when I give it out to them. I'll dump it in the lid, let them pick it. Especially now, people are still nervous about the COVID stuff. So, whorehound candy is a good thing. Chia seeds, that's another good thing to have. We're not going to see chia, but we're going to see sometimes black sage, purple sage, and we can let them know it's a related plant and we can let them taste the yeah, chia like seeds. Probably, yep. probably from there Whole you Foods. Go. Or, yeah. yeah, you can get it at uh, Sprouts, Whole Foods. Uh, you can get it. Unfortunately, the stuff that we get at Sprouts and Whole Foods, these are all from China. Um, but chia seeds, and, and you'll notice I put everything into plastic containers. David's showing you the original bags, but for me, it's just, it's going to knock around in my bag. I don't want uh, these to get cracked. I don't want this to possibly leak out. I have stick dice. We'll play the game later. Native American stick dice. I have walnut dice. And when Peter comes in for the summer program, Peter Rice, I think I mentioned it at the meeting, um, we're going to make clapper sticks, stick dice, and walnut dice for our interpretive program in June. So you guys will be, hopefully I'll be at that. Clapper stick for when we get to the elderberry. And again, we're, we're going to work with all this stuff. I have acorns, acorn caps, uh, oak galls, and an English walnut so I can com contrast that to a uh, black walnut, California black walnut, if we come across that. And again, you're all this stuff, you're not going to take it on every single trip. Look at what's around you, look at the age group. You know, sometimes I know things aren't you know, going to be working in that particular environment. I won't take it. Um, this is Peon. This is another Native American game. These are two um, coyote bones, coyote knuckles, they call them. But anyway, you have one that's black, one that's. Have you guys ever played Peon? So it's a f older kids will, will be good with Peon, and that's where the Native Americans. They're pretty serious about this game. The people that still play it, um, they get real serious about it. They actually have certain people in their tribe that are the ones that will actually hold the hold these, and they have other people in their tribe are the ones that are the guessers. So basically what they'll do is they just kind of shake it up, and they'll take it, and you have to guess which one has the black on it. And, the, and they do that by tipping their head over one way or the other, and usually they cross their arms. Different tribes play it differently, and. A lot of these games you can kind of play as you like, but little kids like the guessing games and stuff. Even the, the older kids like the guessing games. So Peon's another good game to have with you. So those are really the three stick dice, walnut dice, and the walnut dice I just use for show. I let them play stick dice more so. Um, bull roars. Does anybody here not have a bull roar? The waterfall is yeah. Okay, so we'll make, we'll make one after this. I brought the stuff to make uh, bull roars. And these start out pretty much as... Um, 
painter stirrers over at Home Depot, the heavy duty painter stirrers. But the real ones, and you can make a real one if you're good with woodworking. People made them out of driftwood and those kind of things. So I always have a couple of bull roarers. I just took a torch to this one. Uh, my wife's a little more creative. She did some of the artwork on this one. Middle C tuning fork. Okay, you guys familiar with uh, purple nightshade? Potato family, Solanaceae family, tomato family. Uh, they're what they call buzz pollinated. Who knows about buzz pollination? So a bumblebee comes along and, and will vibrate. Bumblebee? One of, one of the bees comes along and will vibrate at a certain frequency. And when it vibrates at that frequency, it's holding on to the purple nightshade flower, the pollen shoots out. It, it senses that vibration where a lot of flowers just have the pollen sitting there and the animal comes up, whatever insect comes up and it gets on them. For purple nightshade, they're real particular about who they want to give pollen to. It has to vibrate at a certain frequency and it'll shoot that pollen out really hard onto the bee's chest and then it can go pollinate another plant. Um, middle C tuning fork will vibrate at that same frequency as the buzz pollination of the bee. So when we go up to and we see some purple nightshade, we'll take out a black handkerchief or I got this at Michael's. I don't even know what they call it. It's like a foamy thing, black. And we'll hold that in front of the flower, hit that, and then touch it to the flower. And you'll see the pollen shoot out a little bit. So don't carry it if there's no purple nightshade on your walk, right? So again, carry what you want to carry for your walk. Sunscreen, I always like to have a little extra sunscreen. You cannot apply it to the kids, but you can squirt it into their hands and they can rub it on themselves. So just remember, if you carry it, do not apply it. Even with the little kids, we're just not allowed to do that. Um, so that's for the middle seat tuning fork. So carry either, either of those things. I saw Doug, Doug Allen did a walk and he showed a cool thing with the... Uh, the uh, by a friend of mine who's a flint napper, but this he made this Native American knife. Hmm. All natural, this is all wood and... and stone and asphaltum and stuff so you can show that to the kids but you know in the meantime you have just these basic you can buy these at, at gatherings and stuff like that um, just something to scrape and i can try and get some of that stuff for you guys um what else do we have oh native american games so I, I lied so i do have more native american games all natural this is a this is a bone this is a uh, california black walnut this is an acorn cap and they can play ball and cup it's a kids game so I'm not very good at it but <laughs> somehow yesterday I was able to get it on my second try but I'm not gonna waste your time with that ring and hoop another one piece of leather so nothing modern here this is all stuff that Native American kids might play with part of an acorn so. okay I'm not good at that stuff. so anyway um, and then lastly let's see where the other part of that is here it is. and again you're going to work to what you know. If you're into geology, or, you know, you'll carry different things, but I'm just giving you some ideas. This here is just a friction fire set. So the kids want to know how Native Americans made fire. Um, I'll have this. Can you just hold that down for a second, Debbie? And I'll just, th this is typically not what we would use to do this, but this fits in my pack. Usually I'd have a much longer spindle, but I can take this and just get it to the point. Oops. Hold that steady. Let me dry that again. I'm not used to having such a short spindle for this. And then the thumb loop really helps with these short spindles. Oh, wow. yeah. Just get it to the point where they can smell some smoke. You don't yeah. have to go all the way and make an ember and make a fire, but mm -hmm. you can see the smoke coming off of there and a little bit of dust. But again, this, you know, play to your strengths. I enjoy doing friction fire and teaching friction fire. Some of the laminates I carry. We'll get into some of that real quick. We'll start with this. I'll usually reach into my bag and say, oh, let me show you some animal scat because I'll talk about, if we don't see the animals, how do we know they were there? So they'll say tracks. We'll talk about tracks and we'll watch y'all do that first. So I'll show them, you know, let's learn, just learn the basics. What's the difference between a, a canine track, feline track? So we'll take a mountain lion and coyote. So what's the first thing you see that's different? Ask the kids. Usually they'll say, oh, the claws. So you can see the claws in the dog family track, right? So ask them, do cats not have claws? You can get into how they retract them unless they're on substrate where they need to lock in more or they're getting ready to attack. But most of the time you won't see claws. What else do you notice is different? Anybody else? Actually, let's make it easy for you. Angle. 